for those who who are joining our Victor, virtual lectures uh, for the first time and are not familiar with our Spirit Center, uh, Joanna G. Angelis welcome you. Um, we are a nonprofit organization located in, in San Carlos and Northern California, and we have activities for kids and adults in Portuguese and English. <clears throat> we are open to the public every Sunday morning and every Monday evening. We also have a virtual group study about the book, The Messengers, every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. To learn more about our study groups and lectures, please visit our website, www.jazzsociety.org, and the URL is also showing the screen right now. So as I said, um, we are thrilled to have our friend, Daniel Santos, tonight. He will be speaking about the book Sex and Destiny, written by André Luiz and psychographed by Chico Xavier a long time ago. Uh, this, book's talk, this book talks about the interference of spiritual world into our daily lives and the importance of daily prayer for us. In terms of our agenda, we're going to start right now. Um, I'm going to ask my dear friend Tony Stewart to uh, help us with the initial prayer. Then after that, Danielle will be presenting for about one hour. We will be open for a few minutes for questions, and I will ask you to please submit your questions via WhatsApp to the number 408-391-3601. The number is also showing the screen right now. We should be wrapping up um, about 7.45 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So for those who have not met Daniel Santos, um, you probably know Vanessa and Celoni. Daniel and Vanessa, they work together. The Noel now is, is <clears throat> the president of the Spirit Society of Baltimore. So for those who are used to the SSS study, the, the study of Spiritism in English. So that came from the Baltimore group. And um, he has been studying Spiritism for the past 17 years about that same range that's when he came to the states from brazil he also helps the spirits movement by recording webcasting live speech talks so for example the seminar that we had back in san diego everything that you guys were able to watch the broadcast but also the the lectures in youtube this is thank you, very much thank you to to daniel santos Professionally, um, Danielle works at the Food and Drug Administration as an in interdisciplinary scientist. So as I said, uh, please uh, submit your questions via WhatsApp and they will be answered right after the lecture. I am going to ask uh, Dania to, to please do the the initial prayer for us yeah, right now. Tanya? Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Let, in this moment, we close our eyes and reconnect our soul with the divine goodness of this moment. Let we connect it with our beloved Jesus Christ, the great architect, the great Lord, the great master, the great teacher, beloved Jesus, as we are all gathering together in your name, we ask for divine guidance, for divine protection, for divine understanding. May our heart and may our mind be open to understand the teachings of today. May you 
Lord, bless Daniel and this moment. And may the higher goodness within himself can send to us through the speech that he prepared to talk to us tonight. Touch and resonate with our soul. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you all the good spirit, the spirit mentors of Jonah De Angelis Spiritual Society to open this service tonight. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, Tanya. So we welcome Daniel. He has already his slides on the screen. If you're watching through your smartphone or iPad, you can also see the slides right now. So good evening, Daniel. How are you? Good evening, Anna. Thank you so much for the invitation. Good evening, everybody. Um, here in Baltimore, we are already like 9.40 uh, p.m. So I guess you guys, three hours um, early. And that's good. So I think this is the perfect time so we can sit down and, and discuss a little bit about this book. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you, Anna Moreno, as well as all the other eight participants that, you know, devote their time to, you know, stop by and, and list this beautiful book uh, of Andrea Luis psychograph by the, the media Chico Xavier. This book is very dear for me because uh, it's one of the first books that I read uh, when I became spiritist and, and, and nowadays for those that live in Portuguese, uh, we have an uh, audio novella that's kind of so popular that they made in Brazil and is great, was well done. I hope pretty soon we can have this in English. I know that for those that speak English, um, uh, in Kardec Radio, I think Vanessa Saloni has uh, um, uh, a um, program that is discussed in this book as well. So if someone wanted to revisit like chapter by chapter that is done by Mackenzie Mello from Boston, just tune in on Kardec Radio and you're going to be able to uh, see what they have been presenting. But today our proposal here is go... Uh, not so deep in the book, but at least bring some highlight of this book, because this book is, uh, is, is very interesting because talk about relationship, basically, and, 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 and how we use our sexuality and how this sexuality can, uh, the misuse of sexuality, uh, majority of the time, can impact in our destiny. The name of the book is Sex and Destiny, and this book is a part of a collection of a book from Andrea Luis called Life in the Spiritual World, as you can see. Uh, this book was published in 1963, and again, uh, the medium was Francisco Cândido Xavier, the Brazilian spiritist medium, that brought many other books. The collection of Andrea Luis has uh, 16 books, uh, 13 of them it belong to this collection that we call Life in the Spiritual World. And we have other complementary books, as we can see, Christian Agenda, Conduct Spirit, It is Obsession. Um, almost all these books nowadays, they are in, in English. Um, so to start, as majority of the books that was brought by Andrea Luis has uh, introduction by Emmanuel and also his introduction. We're just going to highlight um, the introduction that Emmanuel, Emmanuel was the spirit's mentor of the medium Francisco Cândido Xavier. So in the introduction we can read um, um, just an exception of the introduction that says love and sex imprint natural responsibilities in their own, in their own consequences and nobody hurts other affective treasures without painful reparation. This is very interesting. And at the same time, I would say, I don't want to say that it's very serious because we don't want to put some fear here. Uh, I think we are already going to some kind of fear in this country. So we need to uh, see uh, what we uh, as a human being are doing in, in this life in regards to love and sex. And we, we learned that 
uh, law, uh, sex, power, vanity, those things is, is very easily can uh, impact in our destiny. And this book is gonna bring a highlight how the misuse of sex and, 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 and choice that we make really can, can delay our progress, I would say. Uh, and then uh, 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 Andrea Luis comes with his introduction, then we highlight this question that he makes in the introduction. And let me just move here my, okay. So what Andrea Luis asks, what effect, what effects will the sexual experience and conduct of incarnate having the immortal spirit in the future life and their destiny? And the answer is that he answers sex and destiny, love and consequence, freedom and commitment, guilt and redemption, home and reincarnation are the topics of this book, born in the forge of everyday reality. So we see that this is part of us, it's part of us as a, a spirit, immortal spirit, as a, a human being living this life. Uh, uh, sex, sexuality itself is a beautiful uh, energy, is the strong force of the universe, is the creative, creative force of the universe that when we use for goodness uh, really is gonna impact in our life and, and speed up our progress. But if we misuse it, really we make uh, our evolution delay. Uh, so let us move on because we have a lot of to talk about this book. Um, let's see here, let me just move here. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so before I go to um, the main uh, drama or, or, or character of this book, I would also like to highlight for you a question from the Spirit's book that Kardec asked, question number 200 that uh, Kardec asked the superior spirit, do spirits have gender? Why we are bringing this up front? Because the current time that we live, especially like in, in this century, where we have a lot of discussion about you know, uh, same-sex marriage, about, you know, homosexuality. So it's always good to revisit what Kardec in that time, in, 19, in 1857, already had in mind about uh, uh, us as uh, being men or being women. So if we have uh, sex, and the answer was, not as you understand it, because sex depends on organic composition. Love and sympathy exist among, among spirit, but they are based on the affinity of sentiment. And when we talk about sentiment, we are talking about this higher uh, 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 faculty that we, spirit, however, acquire. We know that you know, the, the, the evolution of emotion goes from the instinct that is the base and move to sensation and then to feelings. And feelings is already the sentiment in di different uh, levels. Uh, we have, uh, the instinct is very basic. The, the sensation is something that uh, is the misusing of the sentiment of the feeling and is not well educated. But one day we're gonna get there. Uh, but, well, to start the book, uh, I, I assume that some of you have already read this book, or if not everybody, but I, so my proposal here is give a highlight about the book. There is a lot of detail that we're gonna skip because of time. We just have one hour now, less than one hour, probably 50, 55 minutes to go over the book. The story of the book is based on the story of two families. The families, uh, uh, Torres, uh, where, we have the husband, Nemesio, and the, the wife, Beatriz, and they have a son that we call Gilberto in that reincarnation. The, this uh, uh, family, the two family, they live in Rio de Janeiro, in, I believe in the 50s and the 60s, uh, when the book was, was wrote. Um, the other family live in the same time, the family uh, of Mr. Nogueira, 
Uh, and then we have Claudio Nogueira and Marcia Nogueira, they are husband and wife. And they have two daughters, one called Marina, the other one Marita. So Marita was adopted daughter of, of the, the couple because she was uh, the daughter of the maid that discarnate. And we're gonna discuss a little bit about this when we start to talk about them. So also in the book we have, this is the two family that is still incarnating originally. We have the spiritual team. We have um, um, in, in, the, in the book, we have Andrea Luis, that is the, the reporter, the narrator of this story that is accompanied by Pedro Neve, that is one of uh, the main character of the book because Andrea Luis decided to help Pedro Neve because his daughter, that is uh, uh, Beatriz, Mrs. Beatriz, that is in the deathbed, and we're gonna see this in a few moments, and the spiritual mentor, Brother Felix. So the book starts uh, describe Pedro Neve as in the spiritual world, they are in a, co in a colony, uh, uh, in the spiritual world in, in Nosso Lá, uh, and, and he, he looks very distressed, very sad, and Andrea Luis approach him, and they start to talk, and he kind of explained to Andrea Luis that he was very worried about his daughter, uh, Mrs. Beatriz, that was, you know, approaching the moment of the transition, and but he was upset about the situation that was happening in her house. And here in this picture, you can see the back Andrea Luis uh, and Pedro Neve. Uh, we can see Miss Beatriz on the bed; she was sick. We can see her husband, uh, Mr. Nemesio. And here we have a uh, uh, lady uh, that's Marina, and she is helping. Now, Marina is also a, a, a secretary of Mr. Nemesio, and she's helping in the house. So by look at this picture, I think it looks beautiful if you can lie. but then you see that Pedro Nev is not happy because something is going on here in this house. So after she helps, and then we see in this picture, Andrea Luis, uh, Pedro Nev and Andrea Luis, Andrea Luis is trying to count Pedro Nev because Marina, that was the helper because she has some skill in nursing, although her professional was a, a secretary of, of Miss, uh, Mr. Nemesio, start to think. And Andrea Luis and Pedro Nev start to access the mental field of Marina and observe that she is thinking about, she's showing some like, romantic encounter with Pedro, with, with Nemezo. So that's one of the things that make, uh, is making uh, uh, Pedro Nemezo very upset because his secretary is having an affair with the husband of his daughter. So in another word, Nemezo is having an affair with Marina that in the same time has been helped over there without um, uh, uh, Beatriz, Miss Beatriz, knowing the situation. So Pedro Neve, in spirit, was very distressed about this. So here is something that we, why is important to look at this? Because in our life, sometimes our loved one that has passed away depends on what we are doing here. This might distress them, especially if they are not so evolved, if they are in the same level. And here we talk about a man that is in Osula, he is like doing his study, his, his He's in the same level of Andrea Luis, but he, he, couldn't, he couldn't hold his anger, his upsetness, what is happening in, his, in the house of his daughter. So this, I think this is something for us, one of the highlights I would like to bring for us to put, in, to put in perspective is that whatever we are doing in our life, let's rest assured that those loved ones that passed away, that is is uh, somehow connected to us, is showing the same level, they would be upset, you know, the same way that we get upset if someone mistreat uh, a loved one, our daughter, our spouse. So, and that's what we observe here. So, and here they, you know, they, the spirits observing that after helps uh, Miss Beatriz, Marina, and the is is, is hug each other and, and if you read the book, you're going to see how upset Pedro Nevo is in that moment. And they are like judging. And one thing that Andrea Luis said that, that as they become judging, judge, they are kind of helping them to get together. So at that moment, we see that 
Blood Effect Felix arrive. And Blood Effects arrive and Blood Effect ask, what are you guys doing? Why are guys not helping? You guys are just like judging and, and complaining here. So, and Blood Effect decides to, you know, with his energy. So the, the couple just kind, you know, feel a little bit uneasy. And we see here Blood Effect is applying like his spiritual passes, uh, 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 spiritual passes. So, because he felt something that has some problem in the heart. So he tried to help, even though he doesn't perceive the presence of the spirit. But we can see the spirit over there helping. Brother Felix took the initiative because Pedro Neve and Andrea Luiz was not able to help. Um, just a minute, let me try to move the, okay, so. So now, after that, after everything was settled over there, Andrea Luiz and Pedro Neve is going to Mr. Claudio and Marcia to observe what's going on over there. So, Again, this is two family. One family has one that is in deathbed, but why they decide to go to uh, Mr. Claudio and Marcia house? Because it's the house of the parent of Marina. Marina has, has, has now been uh, um, having an affair, affair with, uh, with Mr. Mr. Nemezo. So they go to the house. So what happened when they get there? Well, the first thing that they observe is that uh, uh, Mr. Claudio, he was like laid down in the sofa reading the newspaper. And he observed that in the living room, there is these two entities, these two spirits. And, 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 and suddenly he starts to analyze what's going on in, in Memezo's, uh, in Memezo's name, Mr. Claudio, Mr. Claudio uh, mind. And the, the two spirit that is over there, he starts to send message to him, speak in his mind. You know, first, the message that they are sent to him is for him that to drink. So they wanted to have Mr. Claudio drinking because um, it was a way that they also can receive this, this energy from, from the alcohol. So Mr. Claudio, um, suddenly he was reading, suddenly he has that scratch in, the, you know, in, that in his throat and, and this willingness to drink something and to drink alcohol. And then he walk and get the cup and get the whisk and starts to drink. And they start to say, you know, I want to I wanna drink, I want to drink, I want to drink. And that's what we see in this scene. So they the, the three other spirits, Andrea Luis, Pedro Neve, and, and Brother Felix is just observing what's going on. And the description of this part in the book is amazing. It's amazing. Uh, if you read the mechanism by what this spirit um, uh, 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 connect to uh, uh, a cloud of peri spirit by peri spirit in order to also uh, enjoy the drinking is amazing. It's like looks like science fiction, but if you read the description, it's, it's very is is amazing. This is the mechanism. This is the mechanism that help for us when we drink with the, all the respect for those that like to drink alcohol. When we smoke, when we do other anything that is. Is, is, is related to pleasure that, that is not doing a very uh, uh, healthy way, will have uh, the influence of the spirit as well. Um, so, I will see the message. Uh, it, uh, so, I have been past the slide uh, are you guys, I mean, anyone can give the feedback because I'm already like in the, the seven slide. Um, which slide are you seeing in the, can, can someone type over there just to make sure that uh, my slide, because I've been passing here in my side. Let me see. I just got a message that my slide is not passing over there. Danielle, let me just check with your PowerPoint just a second, just to see. Yeah, okay. what you seeing? I, I'm in the slide number 13. 13, yes. 14. We, 14. 14? Yes. No, we are not seeing 14. We were seeing still 11. So do you want to refresh? Uh, okay, so let me see here. So, okay, I can, I can refresh. Let's see. 
It's okay now? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I think when I move the, the little bar here, I think I stopped the sharing. Okay. Yeah, now I see, I see, I see? see book on slide 14. Okay, so, so for people to see what I showed before, so I was talking about this. The, now, now you're seeing, okay, isn't it? So yeah. I'm, let me show like the interference of the spirit uh, when <clears throat> this crowd was, was drinking. So now I wanted to bring something uh, from the, the spirit book in regards to the mechanism of, of uh, not only drinking, but the influence of the spirits in our life. So Kardec asked, do spirits have any influence in our thoughts and actions? And enlightened spirit answered, their influence upon us is upon you in regard is greater than you suppose. For very frequently it is there, they it is it is they who guide you. So that is very, very important information for us. Uh, I know that um, we are spiritists, but uh, sometimes we forgot that, you know? And we think that the spirit is gonna uh, uh, come and to aid us and to help us only when we are in the spirit center or when we are doing our gospel. But this, this is an information that many times we listen, we say, oh yeah, we believe, but we don't keep this in our mind. Sometimes when we are driving, we forgot. Sometimes when we are in our work, we forgot that the spirit influence our life. And it, this is for us, the spirit is. And I think here is something that we need to make an effort to remind us. Not that we're gonna go crazy and keep like, oh my God, the spirit is influencing us all the time. No, but it's for us to be attentive that there is this possibility that we help 24 seven. And, and here, I, I just bring this to emphasize that influence. So he was in his house, Mr. Crowd was in his house. He was just reading the newspaper, but he was thinking about life, about other things. And, and the life uh, of Mr. Claudia and Ms., uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Marcia, Marcia Nogueira was not, not they, they are the couple that's going to a very tough relationship, very, 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 uh, it's something that happens very frequently nowadays. So was, was they have two daughters, but they are not connected. They are not connected uh, as a couple, as a husband, wife. And, and the spirit, you know, was take, take advantage of that situation. So um, another piece of information that we, we start to bring to the, the equation now and to, to our uh, 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 discussion is the presence of this young lady that is called Marita. Marita is the adopted daughter of the couple Claudio and Massa. So Marita comes in a different situation because until she was 11, she, was, she, she, thought, she thought that she, she was the biological daughter of the couple. The, the biological daughter of the couple is Marina, the one that was having an affair with, with, with her boss, that is Pedro Never, uh, son-in-law. So Marita is on the bedroom over there, very sad because this time she was already in her 16, 17, and she was very upset because she already got to know that she was not the biological daughter and the, the relationship between the mother-in-law now, the, the, not the, the adopted mother was not going well because she was feeling that she was rejected, uh, that Marina has the preference because it was the biological daughter. So she was very conflicted. She was very conflicted, very sad. And here we see that Andrea Luiz and Pedro Neve, especially Andrea Luiz, is, is uh, uh, doing an assessment of her mental field. So why they are doing this? Andrea Luiz and Pedro Neve, they don't know what's going on in this house, but they know that they were put in charge to help these two family that is coordinated by the, the, the spiritual mentor, uh, Brother Felix. And we see they are doing their like, spirit, the mental assessment over them. So, but then you remember that the, the, the stepfather uh, was in the living room drinking, okay? So in that moment, after they are satisfied, the, 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 the obsessors, the true obsessor, kind of has induced him to drink, now they start to uh, tell the father 
about Marita that is by herself in the bedroom was uh, the description is kind of disturbing because we are talking about a situation here that we listen in the news. It happens everywhere, like, you know, uh, adopted father take advantage of the adopted daughter, even like fathers abusing, you know, uh, their children, sex sexually speaking. So that's uh, the case that's happened here. So by the influence of the spirit, now Mr. Cloud entered in the bedroom. And at the moment, he was checking, but you see that the spirit, uh, uh, the obsessor is kind of like um, pushing, influencing him to do that. And we see how worried Pedro Neve and Andre Luis here in the back trying to, but they, they couldn't do anything because they cannot uh, uh, interfere in the free will of, of, of Mr. Claudio, Claudio Nogueira. So he tried to kind of like take advantage of the, his own daughter. He was under the effect of the alcohol. So, and he was completely like uh, uh, dominated by the will of the, the entity, the, the the obsessor. Of course, this happened because Mr. Claudio also has this impulse toward the, the, the girl. And one of the justification that he's keeping telling himself in his mental field, and Andrea Luis described this, is that he said, oh, she's not my biological daughter. She, there is no blood connection here. And she's a, a beautiful young lady. So there is nothing wrong here. So all this information was be pushing also and potentiate by the by the obsessor. So, but what happened when he was trying to, I would say, I will use the word rape her under the effect of alcohol. So then her, his wife arrives and, and break the, the, the situation. And, 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 and you see like the situation of this young lady is very, 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 very traumatic. She become very stressed with the situation now. Uh, she thinks that she, she, she doesn't even deserve to live. You know, she starts to have suicide thought because the mother doesn't like her because she's adopted. She's just a daughter of a maid that they just do, do a little charity and, and rescue her. And now the father is taking advantage. So during the sleep time, uh, the, her mother was, was, was brought to, to help her. And, and, and she received a spiritual pass, as we can see here, Andrea Louise and um, um, Pedro Neve are helping uh, her. She here, she's sleeping, but uh, she's awake in the other side of, in the Paris spirit, the spirits fall. And we see here a very enlightened spirit help the mother. And she's kind of like, you know, um, um, bring good fluids to, to help her to uh, restore her, her, her stress from, from that night. So the other day she woke up very, very happy, very well, and she went out to have some, you know, lunch, uh, snack time with, with her mother, uh, mother uh, stepmother, in this case, uh, Mrs. Marcia Nogueira. And Marcia, seeing that there is this thing between the, the step daughter and her husband um, try to blame on her. And you see here, even like Andrea Luis is a little bit like confused. I said, okay, so I'm missing here the situation because it's the stepfather that is after her, but now uh, the, the, the stepmother think that is her fault. So she become more confused because now she, she doesn't have any support at home. The, the sister Marina, um, mistreat her. The mother think that she's um, um, uh, just a daughter of a maid, that she's not, because she's not uh, uh, the biological daughter, so she doesn't give too much importance for her. And the father now is, is trying to take advantage for her. So imagine the situation of this lady. So the father know that uh, um, um, the father knows that Marina has a boyfriend. And who is Marina's boyfriend? Is, um, I forgot his name now. Uh, a minute here, let me just, just in the beginning, so. That's Gilberto. Yeah, That's Gilberto, it. exactly. It's, it's, it's Gilberto is the son of, of Nemesio and, and 
and, and, and miss Beatrice. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so Gilberto is, is, is the boyfriend of Marina. But remember, Marina was having an affair with his father, that is Miss ne Mr. Nemesio. So now Claudio has some interest in his stepdaughter. So he's trying to make a deal and he knows that Gilberto, that Marita also likes uh, uh, Gilberto. And Gilberto is having like kind of like, you know, an affair with her, but he's not taking serious, just take advantage of her. And, and she is very in love with Gilberto, but she doesn't know that Gilberto is dating uh, 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 her, her sister, Marina. So the father, kind of like, you know, influenced by the, the obsessor and with this idea in the mind that he needs to pursue, pursue Marita, that is his adopted daughter, uh, intersects uh, a, 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 a note that in that time there is no internet, of course, they used to write notes and letters to one another. So intercept one of this communication between Gilberto and, and Marita, and the father decide to, to confront the, uh, Gilberto and, and ask Gilberto that he, need, he needs to make a decision. And he said, you know, um, I, I like Marina. Marita is just like entertainment, it's not serious. And so he kind of make a pact with him that he, that's fine, but uh, he, he, he needs to, you know, he needs to keep the distance from Marita. So in a way, so he can take advantage of Marita in this case. So that is the conversation that's having here with Sandra Luiz and Pedro Neve and the, the obsessor here. The name of this obsessor, we call obsessor, okay? But it is a spirit that is in that uh, level of evolution. His name, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see in the, in the in, uh, comes ahead. Um, so, and there, Andrea Luis tried to kind of stop that, that, that situation. Because what, uh, what, um, what Mr. Cloud is trying to do here, he's trying to pretend that he's Gilbert, because the meeting that Gilbert uh, and, and Marita wanted to have in a hotel, so he, he's, gonna, he's gonna meet, instead Gilberto is gonna be the father that's gonna go to meet Marita, uh, his daughter-in-law, and, and take advantage, sexual, sexually speaking. Um, so, Andrea Luis and Pedro Neve try now to stop that. And here is something very important. Uh, Andrea Luis is trying to, all the way to find someone that he can influence. So in a way that can, this meeting between the father, Claudio, and the daughter, uh, Marita, does not happen, okay? So, and then he tried to go back to the house to the apartment. When they arrive here, as we can see, uh, uh, Moreira, that is that obsessor, doesn't allow him to get in. So he, the house is completely like dominated by the obsessor now. We are talking here about uh, a vibrational field. You know, there is one thing that they mentioned in the book that uh, uh, because the, the Andrea Luis, um, Pedro Neves and, and Brother Felix, they are in different level of vibration. So when they are observing inside of the house, they could not, they could not, the obsessor, Moreira, could not see them because they are in different level, more evolved level. So, so but uh, here in order for Andrea Luis to talk to the obsessor, he needs to, to low down, uh, you know, his vibrational field. And that's why the Andrea, uh, uh, Andrea Luis tried to, to, you know, approach the obsessor to see if he can get some way to, to stop uh, that, the meeting between the father-in-law and, and Marita. So because it was going to be a disaster. So, but what happened? Andrea Luis had no success when he went back to the house, you know. So now what happened is, uh, is the day of that they're going to, uh, uh, the night that the thing's gonna happen. And we can see here, uh, Mr. Claudio bribing the security guard. And he's trying to make a deal with the security guard, the front, the front desk guard, uh, in a way to make sure that the light is gonna go off. Um, the, the light is gonna 
go off of the building, he's going to turn off the light in the moment that Marita is already in the bedroom waiting for Gilberto, that in this case, it's not Gilberto that's going to come. It's, it's her own uh, father, uh, stepfather. So, so now the situation is already in place. Andrea Luiz is trying in, uh, all the way to see, find someone to, to stop this, to influence someone. So this meeting cannot happen, but he, was, he couldn't. So, so what happened? Uh, this situation happens. Um, um, the, the time that came is that, you know, Marita was waiting. So the father-in-law, even Andrea Luis said that he used the same cologne, you know, in order to, 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 not, to not be mistaken by other person. The dark was very, the, the, the room was very dark. So he got in, he starts to, you know, kind of make up with his own daughter. The daughter didn't know because it was very dark. But when he was, you know, in the middle of the situation, who arrives in the, the bedroom? Marcia Nogueira, his wife arrived in the bedroom. And, and she, when she realized that, you know, the, his own father was taking advantage, she really went crazy. She, she left the place, she started to run on the street, and this is Rio de Janeiro. Uh, toward the Copacabana beach because this was, um, I think, in the Flamengo neighborhood, one of the neighborhoods that's close to uh, uh, Copacabana beach. So she was completely, completely um, lost, you know, for all this situation. Then what came to her mind is to kill herself for the suicidal thought that now take over. And, and in that moment, what happened is uh, Miss Nogueira, uh, uh, Claudia Nogueira decides to tell him that Marita was not a doctor daughter. She was his biological daughter because he had an affair with the maid and the maid got pregnant. And after the maid has the daughter, so she killed herself because she was so um, uh, um, she, she was not, she was so, um, I would say, I'll just say there is a word for this. It doesn't come to my mind. But she was so, she, she, she felt so bad with the situation that she tried. Uh, she will not, she is not, she didn't deserve to live. So she killed herself. So now, ashamed. Thank you. Yeah, ashamed. Humiliate. Yeah, I always try to remember this. So I have some help here from my spiritual guide, Anna, Anna Moreno. So she just said, yeah, ashamed. She was so ashamed. She was so humiliated that she, she, she was depressed and she killed herself. And, and now that uh, Claudia revealed to her that, she, uh, that he was the biological father, that he was not the adopted father, so he had a shock. He was like surprised, you know, because in that time, this thing of blood was, was very, until nowadays there is people that, you know, because it's not a biological son or daughter, doesn't have too much importance compared to those that are connected by blood. So this, this is part of our ignorance because we are all children of God. You know, a child doesn't need to be, first of all, is, 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 is a child of God, you know? So we are just like playing a role of parent here. Doesn't matter if it's biological or not. So then what happened? Now the father, Claudio, is very, you know, ashamed as well, very, very worried. And she just think about kill herself. So that's when she went to a pharmacy and, and with excuse that uh, her dog was, was sick and she wanted to have very strong medicine to put the dog to sleep. And, but the, here there is something interesting. Do you remember that Andrea Louise was looking for someone to, you know, to influence, to, to try to, to avoid that things go, go badly? So here is someone that is in a mental field, very serene, um, very balanced uh, uh, in his thought. So, 
So you see here that she told that she wanted to, you know, something uh, uh, strong to kill, his, to put his dog to sleep. And, and, and the pharmacist, Miss Solomon here, observing that there is something going over there. And of course, Andrea Luis was observing and tried to, you know, send good thoughts to him so he can take a look. So here there is something important in the book is that Andrea Luis with Pedro Neve didn't influence him to change the situation, but make him look at her again. And when you see when the pharmacist looked at her, the pharmacist said, hmm, there is something going on here. Doesn't look like that she want a, a medicine, a poison to put the dog to sleep. So what the pharmacist decided to do is just like use some placebo, you know, just uh, make a pill that, that doesn't have any effect. So he got the pill and he went to the beach. Uh, and so what happened is that when she was on the beach, uh, uh, she was really sad, really distressed, and she fell asleep on the beach. And that's when, you know, someone tried to take advantage. She tried to run away, to run away. And what happened? When she was crossing the street in Copacabana Beach, she was hit by a car. And here we can see the moment that she was hit by a car, and then we see the Andrea Louise in spirit form and, and Pedro Nev trying to help her. And so, and she was brought by her to the hospital. So when she got in the hospital, they called uh, the parent, um, uh, in this case, Claudio Nogueira and, and, and Marcia Nogueira. And we see that Claudio now feel very remorseful. He is he's feeling very bad. And we can see here that Claudio Nogueira is in the hospital, visiting her, she is kind of in coma and followed by the, the obsessor. And here we see Andrea Luiz and, 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 and also Pedro Neve, uh, observing uh, the situation of Marita. So one thing very interesting I'm not going to go is that Andrea Luis, this point, is visible to the obsessor. And the obsessor is, is starts to feel sad because the obsessor, he's, he's not an obsessor of Claudio, he's a friend of Claudio that needs to, you know, you know those kind of friends that be with us because uh, like to, to to do things, entertain, entertainment, uh, uh, have fun. And, and now uh, Moreira, uh, I'm gonna call Moreira from now on, not obsessed anymore. He is, he's feeling some compassion, some, you know, is connected to the feelings of sadness that Cloud is having now, because now he knows that he is the biological father. What he's doing was wrong. Uh, and, and he is very remorseful. He's very, very, very regret so much what he was doing. So in that moment, Andrea Luis apply, apply uh, spiritual passes and also invite Moreira to help. Andrea Luis said that Moreira, Moreira, because he has so much, he's very connected to, you know, the earthly and, and his spiritual energy was very strong and he really helps uh, Andrea Luis show to him how to do the passes. And in the meantime, that we can see here, the, even the, 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 the spirits of Celso, now Moreira, is helping uh, her energize, being some spiritual fluid to keep Marita alive. That was not time for Marita to make the transition. So uh, 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 Brother Felix, and the, with the help of Andrea Luis and, and Moreira, was able to keep her alive for a couple of weeks. And we see here, uh, Moreira already working, helping donate energy to keep her alive. So one of these visits, Mr. the pharmacist, Miss Solomon, came to visit um, uh, Marita because he knows um, uh, Mr. Claudio. And after he left, he left uh, after he left the hospital, after he went to the hospital, he gave uh, the, the, the gospel course to spirits to Mr. Claudio. And, and of course, when he opened the gospel, he opened a, in a, in a passage that, that caught his attention and he starts to read the gospel across the spirit. So now we see he's very sad, very remorseful, and the book just came in the right time, in the right place for him. So he starts to read, he's crying, he's very sad, he starts to read the gospel and, 
And Andrea Luis said in that night, he basically read a lot of passage of the book. And we see uh, uh, Andrea Luis try to, you know, help him to continue read the book. So, but what happened is uh, after two weeks was the time for Marita to, you know, to make the transition. But, you know, because she has received all these spiritual energies, she somehow has, you know, show some sign that she'll come back. And, and one of these nights, what happened is before she made the transition, she started to speak very angry. She started to say, this is Marina fault because she knows and she discovered that Gilbert was dating Marina. And, and when she got to know about this information, then this also push her to commit suicide, to go to the pharmacy and to buy the medicine. So now she had the father that is to try to rape her, who raped her, the mother that doesn't care about her, and the sister that is dating the man of her life, in this case, Joubert. That's what's going on in her mind. So, and then one of these moments before she departure, so she starts to speak. She is in coma, but she starts to vo verbalize, mentally speaking, you know, and the obsessor was able to read her thoughts. And her thought was that all this is because of Marina, was Marina's fault. So what happened? The obsessor became so furious. Do you see, not the obsessor, in this case, um, uh, um, uh, uh, Moreira, was so upset that he decided to leave the place and go straight to what Marina was. So Marina was in, in, in Mrs. Beatriz that now had made the transition, has died, and Marina is over there. And she's kind of like, she is, this is showing like the funeral. You see here, this side we have uh, uh, the spirits. We see that the body, uh, the spiritual body is, is, is is removed from the physical body. But here there is something very important that happened this moment. Marina is feeling so bad, so guilt, because now she's dating the, the, the son and dating the father, okay? She, is, she has some interest, you know? The interest, um, um, you know, in have good life. And, and that conflict that she starts to play in her head was a open door for the influence of Moreira. Now here's something that we need to learn. Every time we, our emotions, our sadness, our depression, our conflict, our guilt play a role, we are somehow open the door for a spiritual influence. And we need to be very aware of this. It's not for us to be completely afraid because this is a normal mechanism that happens. It's the same thing that if we feel down, a friend approach you and say, hey, let's go out, let's drink, let's forget about this. And because we are very vulnerable, it's very easy for us to fall. And that's what happened here. So he come and he tried to say, you know, that she's a murder, she's a murder, she's a murder. And she buys this information. And she become very, very, very sick. So in the meantime, Miss Nemesio now, meet Marcia, Marcia Nogueira, and somehow they have a connection over there. So Marieta now is, is because she become very depressed, so she is uh, 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 put in a psychiatry hospital. So in the meantime, Nemez and Marcia start to have a relationship. So they travel to Europe, to Europe, they spend some time uh, 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 away of Brazil. And here we see Nemez and Marcia telling Cloud that they're gonna, you know, have a uh, travel and, and Cloud looks very, very depressed because, you know, the, the daughter is dying. And Marcia, she's so cold blood, she's, she doesn't care at all, you know, because she considers that this is the maid's daughter, it's not her daughter. So, but before, one thing that really turn the whole situation upside down is that Memezio find out about Gilberto and Marina. And guess what? Now is his time to, to be unbalanced. He, he really goes crazy. And, and we see here, Gilberto didn't see, but 
uh, Marina saw when you know the thing happened. So he became so upset with the, with the son. So he, you know, became very violent. He hit the son and expelled the son from his house, and because the son was dating the girl, and 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 it was a mess. So now we have two family that's completely destroyed. You know because of the, the choice that, you know, some of those people had in that family. One side, uh, uh, Nemez, and the other side, Claudio Nogueira. So here, after like two weeks, was time the Marita uh, moved and, and, and made the transition. And we see here, Brother Felix came, he said a very heartfelt prayer, and the process of disincarnation according to Andrea Luiz was, was beautiful. So, and, the, and she was removed from the body. So she's brought to a place, a spiritual colony called Alma Irmãs. Um, I don't know the translation, but we, we, we're gonna call it an institute that I think they don't, didn't translate the, key, the same name, Alma Irmãs Institute. That is, is not in Nosula, it's a colony that is a little bit lower than Oslo, but it, it's kind of like have some collaboration with people in Oslo. So Andrea Luis didn't know much about this, this colony, but uh, Pedro Neve and him decided to get to know the Institute, Alma, Almas Irmãs Institute, uh, Fraternal Souls, we put over there. And so a, a brief information about this Institute before we approach the end. So this is a spiritual institute with the goal to help with the sexual reeducation of discarnate spirits and is coordinated by Brother Felix. So Brother Felix is not only coordinate this um, influence about these two family, but he also the main coordinator of this institute. So some uh, information about this institute. So the institute, um, it is, has a complaint department, means that people that feel that they were um, uh, not, they, they were like, they suffered when they were incarnated because of, um, uh, uh, they were like deceived by sexual promise. You know, when people promise that's gonna marry, have sex with you, but uh, doesn't take the commitment. So when discarnate, if the person discarnate and feel that the person was, uh, was someone took advantage, they can go to the department of complaint and complain about that situation. So also respond for sexual education and they have a couple of, uh, uh, here, oops, here is what they discuss and what the department they have over there, sexual and love, sex and, and, and marriage, sex and fraternity, sex and stimulus, sex and balance, sex and medicine, I cannot say the other one because I need to move here. This a minute. Sex and evolution, sex and law. So all this department is there to help people that uh, somehow fail when were incarnated. So they are redirected to one of the, the, the uh, department in order to, you know, um, to to work in, the, in their self and prepare for a new reincarnation, not fall again on the same mistakes. Uh, just move in. Okay. So, some information. Okay. So, some statistics about um, at the institute. Uh, basically, the, the, it prepares uh, the the souls for reincarnation, the spirit to reincarnate. And in eighty years, the institute has helped uh, six thousand spirit. And some statistic that's very important for us is that 18% of the 6,000 spirit, uh, uh, when they incarnate and go back to the spirit world, they, they were absolutely victorious. So they really like was able to, to improve. 22% was improved, not completely victorious, but improved a little. 26% imperfect, imperfectly improved. And 34% of the souls, the spirit that return, they worsen their deaths. So that is very, very serious. Yeah. Although if we make the math here, we see that majority improves because if we put like 18 plus 22, 26. So we are talking about one third of spirit that go back with their death 
uh, increased. So now that things is um, uh, getting placed between Marina and Gilberto because after the father has expelled uh, him from her, his home and, and, and he has, Miss Nemes has traveled to Europe with uh, Marcia Nogueira, so they decide, you know, to get married. That's what happened. So Mr. Gilberto and Marina uh, uh, got married and we see here Claudio Nogueira. Now, he's now a spiritist man. He starts to go to a spirit center and became a spiritist. And now they are living together. Um, when uh, Memezo came back, he, he, knew, he got to know that uh, uh, Marina was married to Gilberto and all the letter that he has sent to her was intercepted by Miss Claudio that doesn't want to, you know, this to, 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 to come to, to, to Marina. So he kind of intercepted all the letters and when he came back, he found out that they are uh, married. So he became very angry and, and he put in his mind that he will kill Marina. So one day Marina was, pre uh, was, uh, was walk, was pregnant. So she was walking the, in the street with Claudio and he, Miss Nogueira, uh, now tried to hit her with the car and Claudio saw and he basically jumped in front of the car to save uh, Marina and he was uh, hit by the car and, and died. So now we have Miss Beatriz on the other side, Claudio discarnate and Marita discarnate. All of them was rescued to the Institute Almas Irmãs, Almas Irmãs Institute. So now what happened is after, you know, she recovered, Miss Beatriz recovered the other side, she desired to come back and see her husband, her husband, Miss Nemezo. And at, at the beginning, they still didn't want to, chew, but then they decided to let her come back and see the house and see how her husband, uh, Nemezio, was doing. And when she came, she really was terrified because Nemezio now was cra a crazy guy, a crazy man. He really could not accept that Marina was married with, with his son. And he completely became sick. He has a stroke and, and he is over there. He, in the house is a mess. Everything that you know, when she saw that, she really went crazy. She, she couldn't handle the situation. So she went back, they brought back uh, Miss Beatrice to the Institute. And when she, and they applied that they call uh, sleep therapy. So she was in a bed and there is some device connected to her to make her sleep. And during the, the moment that she was asleep, she starts to speak. And suddenly they observed that she took another personality and, and she, she starts to, you know, say that uh, uh, she was uh, Miss Leonor Tellis. And, and this was in the year 1792. And she starts to describe what happened that year. So she was married, she has a son. And here we can see her. Um, so she was married, she has a son. His name was Alvaro. And she was very proud of the son. But uh, then when the son became 22, the son came back from Europe. And because of pride, she, tried, she introduced her son to the society of the time. And, and she shake a lot of hands. One of the hands that she shake was for a, you know, a, a lady that was married. And they immediately had a connection. Over there. He was 22, she was in her 30s. And, and, and then she starts to unfolding different personalities, different people in that time. So she starts to do like kind of a like regression therapy, but they don't say regression therapy, they, they call uh, sleep therapy. And she starts to tell the name of several people. So, and then what happened then, because they are in the institute and they know they have the record of all the spirit that left the institute. So they decide to investigate who were those people, okay? So here we have, uh, Mrs. Beatriz, that is under this sleep therapy. So she, in, in the year 1792, she claims that she was Leonor Tellis, and she was married, she has a son, Alvaro, and she was married to Justiniano Tellis, that was her second husband, and the first husband died. 
Now, Mrs. Uh, Marcia, now that she was ma mentioned in the dream, was British Castaneda, that was married with Teodoro Castaneda, and they have a daughter called Virginia. So Virginia was Marina in the lifetime. Okay, this is in the past. So Marita was not in the place now. So what happened is Alvar, when he was introduced, so he immediately connected with Brits and started to have an affair. So Miss Teodoro now starts to have a relationship with a young lady called Nanina, that is Marita. So after a couple of months of this relationship, Alvar, much younger, get you know, he got like, okay, he didn't, she, he's not interested in Miss, uh, in, in British Castaneda anymore. So he, he created a story that he has a fiance back in Portugal when he was uh, studying, and he tried to push British Castaneda to his stepfather that was Justiniano. Justiniano was not his biological, father, was his stepfather. So in order to uh, 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 leave the relationship, so he left Brazil, went back to Portugal, and now Justiniano and, and Brit started a relationship. Why? Brit was so heartbreak. She was so heartbreak that she completely changed. Now she didn't. She didn't. She 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 doesn't have her her, her marriage anymore. Her lover left her, and now she has nothing to do. The only thing that she has is the the the, the daughter that is Virginia that she is even don't care much. And he starts, she starts to have a relationship with uh, uh, Alvaro's uh, uh, stepfather uh, because now she became very bitter, very angry, very, very uh, selfish person, very proud. So she just wanted to take advantage of people. So, so now what happened? Uh, Virginia uh, was. Uh, in the middle of the situation as well, even Brits tried to set up, you know, Justiniano with Virginia. Um, but then after they, you know, discuss all this, the question arise. So, okay, so now we know who it is. So we know that British Castanier is Marcia, Justiniano is Nemesio, Virginia is Marina, Naninha is Marita, Teodoro is Claudio. So the question is, who is Alvaro? because Alfred was the one that created all this situation. And so here what Brother Felix says, the author of all this drama, the one who caused this tragedy, suffering and pain in all this life is claiming the opportunity for reincarnate as Marcia grandson. So Marcia now in this, in this existence, she is by herself, she is uh, depressed, she is, She's bitter, she's something, she's some, a person that's not, um, doesn't, doesn't even want to know about her daughter, that's Marina, and the grandson, and the granddaughter, the granddaughter, in this case was Marita, that reincarnate. So the question is, who is Alvaro? Because he is the one that kind of initiated all this. So, and then they say, my friends, Alvaro and me are the same person, the same spirit. And for our surprise, in this part of the book, Brother Felix was Alvaro, that was the creator of all this drama uh, in the 1700s, 1700s, 1800s. So this brings something for us as our approach for the end is that we all always gonna have a second chance, no matter how much we have messed up in the past, here right now is the time for us to redeem and to do the right thing. So we see here a spirit that creates all this problem. Now he's trying to, that's why he's the mentor of this two family. So, but what happened? happen? Um, um, Gilbert and Marina, they are married and they're gonna receive Marita as, 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 as their daughter. Marita will be uh, a Marina and Gilbert. So one thing in interest is that according to the incarnatural plane, Marita should be the one that would marry Gilbert in that reincarnation. But because of Marina was doing this, you know, affair with father and son, and she, because she killed herself, she cut short her life, so she missed the opportunity. But since she was rescued, and then now she's gonna have the chance to come as his daughter. 
And they mentioned something very interesting that, you know, Marita is going to come as Gilberto's daughter. They're going to have a very good relationship between father and daughter. But when she reaches the teenage year, she's going to have a problem for her mother. That's Marina. That in that incarnation was her sister, uh, stepsister. And, and, and she's going to have like some, some conflict. Andre, Andre Luiz mentioned this, called this our attention, our attention. So that we see nowadays when we see daughter and mother and father and daughter or son have some relationship, especially when it comes to a teenage, is because it's some unfinished business from the past. That's a good information Andre Luiz brought to, brought, uh, brought to us in this book. Brother Felic will reincarnate now because he, his, his, he wanted to come back to be a grand, the grandson of, of uh, uh, Márcia Nogueira, that in the 17th, 18th century was uh, uh, her, uh, his lover, uh, Miss British Castanier. So he's going to be reincarnated as a son of the couple. Here we see the encounter when he's sleeping, when um, Gilbert and Marita is, is like, the, the reincarnation was done in a way that when the father is sleeping, of course, the mother also participates in this. They kind of meet to create this fluid connection. So because he, she's going to be reborn as, as his, his, his daughter. So, and the book finished with the encounter of uh, 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 Brother Felix. His name is, is Sergio. And, and after like many years that Massa has not, have any relationship, never talk to her, uh, her daughter Marina anymore. Um, so one Sunday uh, morning, they decide to go to the beach. And coincidentally, the mother-in-law, the, 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 the grandmother was over there. And so, and Andrea Luis and, and Pedro Neve was very emotional when, during this encounter because they described in very beautiful detail that uh, we're not going to uh, bring here, but if you are interested, go and read the book because this really is going to make you cry. I, I feel so so emotional when, when Andrea Luis starts to describe the moment that they meet each other. And and it was, was a very spontaneous meeting, and we see that the boy over there, Sergio, that is brother Felix, and that was Alvaro, have like an immediate connection with the grandmother. And, and the mother, Marina, even told him, so Sergio, tell grandma uh, what we used to do. Because since uh, young, very one to, one to two years, he, he learned how to pray. He was a very, his brother felt like he's the mentor. So he already had a baggage of, of his spiritual knowledge and, and, and intellectual knowledge as well. So tools for our discussion, I think we are like, 10, 15 minutes uh, ahead. So I just would like to finish, encourage you, if you already read the book, please go back and read again because we always find elements for our, uh, our life and to help us. Even if it is not related to, the book is not about only sexual things. It's about relationship. It's about emotion. It's about feeling, sentiment that is not well uh, um, um, work is not well uh, discussed among us. So, and I would like to leave some uh, tips for us to think about it. One is, you know, spiritual knowledge is not, is, is not, it, it's not something that uh, is always have this spiritual knowledge is always something that will help us. Uh, some, some people think, oh, I already know this, no. It's not, it's never too much, okay? So as much as we can advance in our spiritual knowledge about ourselves and learn with these books would be good for us. Self-knowledge and self-awareness. Get to know ourselves. This is the big, I would say, challenge in our life because we think that we know ourselves, but we don't. When situation comes to our life and we experience this in these last two days, and, and even the spiritual people get distressed because of a result of an election that we should even take this moment and to make a evaluation and, and, and not be here to judge or, or to condemn, but uh, to understand the process. That is part of our awareness and self-knowledge. Uh, and always 
keep in mind that the spiritual therapy is a great tool for us to help in any area of our life. So I would like to stop here. I thank you so much and apologize for uh, go a little bit, 10 minutes, almost 50 minutes after. But uh, this book has so uh, uh, much information that is, is, is no matter how much we talk, we have, uh, 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 we have elements for like hours and hours. So I would stop here if you have any questions. So I'll be here to, uh, to answer. Thank you, Danielle. <clears throat> it's uh, it was a it's, it was a, a great lesson. I think that as you su suggested, this book is is a must read for those who are very curious about the mediumship and this interaction between the material realm with the spiritual realm. is It's a great example of how our moral conduct kind of brings together those spirits that have the same level of affinity and vibration with us. Um, I know that we are a little bit um, over the, the hour, so I haven't received any questions. So I would ask everyone, if you have any questions, feel free to send me via WhatsApp at 408-391-3601. And then I'll make sure that I send it to Danielle and we can uh, get back to you later. Okay. Danielle, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you. It was great to hear the story and uh, it, clearly the, your passion and, and uh, interest about the book uh, was shared with all of us. Thank you. Yeah, I think just, it's not only Sex and Dash, but all the thirsting book of Andrea Louise, and we have been studied here in the Spirit Society of Baltimore, uh, Action and Reaction, um, um, Life Goes On, and all the first team, uh, the last one that we studied was Evolution to War, that is an excellent book, it's very technical, but also very, 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 very uplifting book. So all these books bring uh, great teachings for our life. And, and, and the thing is, if you already read this book, um, go back and read again, you're gonna find elements over there that will help you. Yeah, I think that, that's a great point. These books should not be read as soap operas, like novels type of thing. Everything that Andrea Luis writes, as well as Emmanuel, there is a reason why they put that in the paper. So we need to kind of uh, take out the future of, um, as a reader and look at those books as we are studying a lesson. They are, th these are not characters, these are all of us, right? So. Um, and one thing that I missed to mention to at the beginning is that Andrea Luis mentioned the introduction of the book that the name of the character uh, was changed. But if we make the, in the hours making the math, I think uh, uh, Sergio, that is brother Felix, if this was in the 60 or 50, happened during the 50, let's put in the 50. So it means that it's possible that he's still alive. He's still living in Brazil. In, yeah. I don't know if in Rio, but if we make the math, if he was born like, the book was written in 1963. So, and, and I believe that this might happen like, you know, between the 50 and the 60, uh, or the 40s or the 60s. So if you put someone that was born between the 40s and the 60s, the person is still alive now yeah and and you know and because of this the, the spiritual knowledge i think this person might be even the spiritist movement <laughs> I, we don't know so i was even thinking to myself when i said oh my god is there anyone that's called sergio that is very yeah. smart in the spirits movement in brazil but but andrea luis in the beginning he always said that he changed the names to avoid and and, and you, you know <laughs> In, in problems so but uh, yeah so i'm pretty sure Sergio, that brother felt might be around us you know, yeah. you know? That's <laughs> it's true. just like uh it's just a simple thing here. yeah well thank you thank you everyone for staying with us tonight and uh now to wrap up um danielle do you want to do the final prayer for us please yeah i i, I can of course, a prayer is always good. <laughs> okay, so let us take this moment and first of all, be thankful for our spirit's kind 
the mentors of this group, uh, Joanna de Angelis Mill Society in California, all its members and, and, and the, the friends in California that is working very hard to uh, make this message available. We ask the Lord that to bless all our good intentions that give to us the strength so we can continue with this work. Bless this initiative and bless the technology that allowed us to become very close despite of the physical distance. With our guidance, protection, permission, we close this moment of reflection about this beautiful book, Sex and Destiny. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It is a blessing. So much. Now have a good night. You thank too. You. Don't yes. forget to send me the link so I can listen what I said because 